feel honored this morning. Uh, I have my oldest brother with me today and his wife Pam and two of the most wonderful young grandkids you could ever uh, of theirs. I wish I could borrow them for ours, but they are the most wonderful kids, Haley and Morgan. And if you are down today and not feeling just quite up to it, after the service, I want you to come up to Morgan and she will make you feel good. I promise you. Isn't that right, Morgan? Yeah. Yeah, You got it. This girl is the most loving young lady that you'll ever come up against. And uh, I know at their church, they've actually allowed Morgan to sit at the door greeting people as they come into the church. And I'm telling you, this little girl's, she's in tune with God. She truly is. And she touches my heart. And uh, she made me feel good to Art and Bob back there that I'm the best ever. You know, Morgan. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't got to do that. There's no payment needed there, Greg. Uh, but it is good to be here. I, I just feel led to start out with, with this song. Um, so I'll just share it with you. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Well, now I'm looking across that old river of which I've never been before. There's just a few more weary days down here to labor then I will take my heavenly flight to Beulah land I am longing for Someday on thee I'm gonna stand There my home shall be eternal In Beulah It's Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. Amen. What a glorious day that's going to be, isn't it? That we get to see our Lord and Savior face to face. What a glorious day. God just laid on my heart earlier to sing that chorus and that song, that medley of songs, as it touches me so. Some older, some younger people, I've never heard of them songs ever before. Well, some of them are pretty old, and uh, 
Not that I am old, but I love them older songs to bring out. Hey, there you go. So we thank God for those songs. So, uh, well, I, today I awoke this morning very restless. Uh, didn't sleep very good last night because what I have here today wasn't what I had last night. Um, and I, I wish I could preach what I had last night, but they ain't got what God wants me to do today. And I thought Morgan was going to be here and Haley and Dennis and Pam, but I wasn't sure. But I would have had an argument with God today if I knew they for sure were going to be here. Because that message I had last night went right down their alley. And I know everybody else's, but i got to listen to God today. And so this is what he has for me to share with you today. I'm going to read from the book of John chapter 8. If everybody take your Bibles and read there, it's a story we should know. The most of us pretty near by heart. But it's the story of the, uh, the woman caught in adultery. John chapter 8, verse 1, and we're going to read through verses 11. Starts this. Now, I'm reading from the NIV this morning. At dawn, he, who being Jesus, appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, and the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a, a basis for accusing Jesus. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to, cat, to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the oldest ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Help it to come alive in our lives today and in our eyes and in our ears. Help us to listen as your word has been read and continued to be read and Father, as I share, I pray that your words be heard. I stand aside and let you take over this morning, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law brought this woman before Christ and asked him, you know, according to the law of Moses, this woman should be stoned because she was caught in the act of adultery. So there she stood there before all the people, being embarrassed, you know, because of these guys doing this. But my question has always been when I've read that story, well, where was the man? And according to, Jew, uh, according to the law of Moses, both the man and the woman were to be standing there. And we find that if you would take your Bible and read, turn back to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, it says this, a man commits adultery with another woman's wife, a man's wife with the wife of his neighbor. Both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. Now this is a sign that these guys are really trying to put Jesus to test. They were trying to get him to sway one way or another. It's also uh, made out in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. They must die. And the purpose of doing that was to purge evil from e Israel. 
the purge of sin, all the people that are creating, are, are uh, committing sins. They were they were committing sins of adultery. And I've always I always wondered that question. Well, why did they? Why did they just bring her? You know, takes two to tango, doesn't it? But that proved to me in reading in, in the Old Testament and these in Deuteronomy or Leviticus and Deuteronomy that, hey, this was a sure-fired trap so that they could accuse Jesus of saying wrong to get rid of him, get him out of their way. They hated Jesus just because he was sharing the love of Christ, because he was healing people, because he was going across the land telling the story of God and sharing with people, hey, you can be healed if you believe. Just believe you can be healed. There was times when he, when he cured the, uh, 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 the, the uh, one man's uh, slave and he wasn't even there. The master's faith is what healed the guy. Jesus was in another area. So Jesus didn't have to be right there to touch people to heal them. It was the faith of the people that healed them. But back to the story here at hand. Again, the Jewish leaders had already broken the law by bringing just the woman and not the man, the law of Moses. But Jesus is here, and this woman is standing before the crowd. I'd, li I'd like to just, I want to try to enact this, if I can, to kind of bring this to life to people. Uh, uh, Beth, can I borrow you for just a moment, please? Can I come right on up here? Thank you very much, Beth. Now, can I get John to come on up here? Can I get you, Art, to come on up here, please? Can I get one of those young men back here in the back? Can I get one of you to come up here, please? Norm, can I get you to come up here? This guy running with joy to come up here, Beth. All right. Now, here on this table, I've brought some rocks with me this morning to kind of demonstrate. I like to bring things alive in front of me and in front of you. I'm a man. I like to touch stuff. I like to see stuff. I like to see it. This is how God's Word comes truly to life in my life is by object lessons. Come on up here, Norm. You look good today, so we'll put you front center. Thank you very much, Norm. I like this because Norm, Norm's the lawyer, so he should know some of the law here a little bit. So, so this is kind of proving that, hey, the, we got the Pharisees and we got the teachers of the law. Being Norm, we got a representative up here. But anyhow, I want you all to grab a stone, a rock. I want you to look at those rocks. I want you to look at those rocks. Some of them are pretty. They're very pretty, shiny. They're heavy. Would you agree with that? They're heavy. See, even some of them's got jagged edges on them, sharp edges. Some of them's flat. This long one here looks like a spearhead. Now, if we all, we got Beth. She's representing the woman over here, okay? I would just like you to kneel down here, Beth, if you wouldn't mind, please. Now, you got Jesus kneeling down here right in, in the dirt, okay? He's talking to the woman before these folks, you know, are, they got their rocks at hand. They're ready to throw it at this woman because she's, she's due to be stoned in their eyes and killed. But Jesus is down here listening to them, and he's writing in, in the dirt. Now, nobody really knows the scholars and all don't really know what Jesus ever wrote in that dirt. He could have been playing tic-tac-toe for all we know. But 
I think I, I kind of fall with some of them to believe that maybe he might have been writing the sins of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law in the dirt. I kind of think that's what he was doing. Now, that's, that's my version. Don't take that to the bank. But I believe he was doing that. And as he was doing that, he said, well, if that be the case, then let the first man that has no sin throw the first rock. So I want you guys to throw your rock at Beth. I believe those guys stood there just like these guys, just kind of dumbfounded. As Jesus reached back down there, come on guys, throw your stones. Why aren't you throwing it at this woman? You've accused her of adultery and she's due to be stoned. Throw your stone. What did they do? Guys, what did they do according to scripture? They dropped their stones, they walked away. So drop your stones, walk away. Just drop it right on the old floor. And they walked away, the oldest to the, the youngest. And they walked away, but they dropped their stones. You stay right there, Beth. Thank you guys for helping Norm. But this woman was there left with Jesus. And as he was standing or kneeling still writing in the sand, where are your accusers? He questions her, where are your accusers? As he's writing in the sand, you know, where are your accusers, Beth? They're not here. And Jesus looks up and says, I guess I accuse you not either. So go and sin no more. Live a life free of that sin. It was as simple as that to Jesus. He didn't condemn her. He didn't, after they left, he didn't say, now, Beth, you know you shouldn't all have did that, so why are you doing it? No. He just said, so I accuse you not also. So go and go home. You get up, Beth. Thank you very much for helping out. But you see what they were trying to do? They were trying to trap him into saying one way or another. Now, if he'd have, if he'd have said, yeah, go right ahead and stone her, well, then he would have went against the law of Moses because the guy wasn't there. And if, he'd have, and, if, and if he would, you know, if he decided there, he'd have went against God's ways by saying, well, I accuse you not either. I forgive you. But go and live in that sin no more. And today, we today are being accused by a lot of people. In the beginning, before you accepted Christ, if you have accepted Christ, you were Beth down here. But when the day you accepted Christ, these guys dropped their stones, your sins, they were dropped. And Jesus said, go, I accuse you no more, your sins are forgiven, go and live a life free of sin." Now, how many of you here today could say you're living a life free of sin? Come on, be honest. How many of you here say you sin every day? If you ain't got a hand in there, you're a liar. We all sin every day, no matter how small. Because God says in his word that we are to take up his cross daily. 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 And if we don't, I will have no part of you. You'll have no part in the kingdom of heaven if you don't take up your cross daily and die to yourself and your own foolish desires. And so I relate that to this story, and that is the fact that we all need to die to our sins. We all need to accept Christ 
as that woman did. She trusted in Christ right there because she was looking to be stoned and killed and not get away from there. But it was because of Christ and the love of Christ and the compassion and the grace of our living God that he forgave her and told her, go, sin no more. You see, the, the, I found that the Roman law, this I found uh, in John 18.31. Let's just turn over there real quick. John 18.31. Come on. Or 8. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It is 8, 1, and 2 is where I want to go. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of a sinful flesh to be a sin offering. We're set free of this sin. You can be set free of this sin if you're not a Christian today. Or if you're still dabbling in sin, you can be set free of this sin. But you have to make the choice to come to Christ. You have to make the choice to let loose of your own life, pick up your cross, and come to Christ. Pick up your cross and don't dabble with that sin no more. Pick up your cross and be a follower and a soldier of Christ. And I'm thankful that Christ did that for me. How about you? Amen. 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 I've got a God that loves me endlessly. We've got a God that loves you endlessly. You've got to believe that. John 3.16 tells you that. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that's everybody inclusive, that he gave his only begotten son, that you can have everlasting life. That I can have everlasting life. Everyone here. And this morning I want to just challenge you today and invite you that if you've not made that decision or if maybe there's sin creeping into your life I invite you to come to Christ today we can have such a service here of people surrendering to God giving up small sins, big sins, troubles burdens, whatever it may be if you'll only let him If only let him. Because you know I found that coming to Christ is a choice. Our choice. Because he tells us that if anybody hears my voice, as I'm knocking at the door and lets me in, I'll come in and I'll sup with them. So this morning I want to ask you, is there something going on in your life that you need Christ to take care of? There's something going on in your life that you just ain't got no control of that's burdening you down. I do. I do. And I know a lot of you good enough to know you do too. 
And God is good and gracious enough to lift that burden. This is where pride stands in the way. God hates pride and prideful people. So I'd like to take this time and invite you to come to the altar. Come to the altar and surrender it to God. Let him have your burden. Let him have this load. And I know you'll be lightened by it. And you can go away from here saying, I surrendered all. I surrendered all. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender all to him, not just part of it, I surrender all to him. All to him. So we're going to sing this one last song here as, as kind of our closing benediction. But that doesn't close an altar. Don't let somebody else influence you and hold you back. Because I found that this relationship with Christ is just me and him. It's not me and my wife and him. It's me and him. And it's you and him. It's not your neighbor. It's you and him. And so the decisions that you make are what matter in your life. Not what your maker or your, your wife or your spouse or your husband or your neighbor or your cousin or your whatever make. It's what you make. So as we sing this last song before we dismiss today, I want you to be thinking on this. God is there sin in my life? I need it out so that I can be the Christian and the servant that you truly want me to be. God, I've got this burden on my shoulder that I just can't bear no more. Come take it from me. And what I've found for myself is that when I've got a burden on my shoulder, my fists are clenched like this. And what I have to do is I need to turn it over and open them up and let God have it. Let God have it. And I know your worries will begin to diminish because he takes them upon himself. Let's sing that last song, guys as we finish our service up here this morning, okay? And again, the altar here is still open. I invite you to come up here and just commune with God. Talk to God, just one-on-one, -on -one, and let him have it, okay? Let's all stand, do you please?
seeds.